Welcome to Roads to Success. I am your host, Jessica Rhodes, and I'm here to help you rock the podcast from both sides of the mic. This is the podcast where you're going to learn all about rocking your podcast interviews and leveraging the power of podcasting to grow your business. I am the founder and CEO of interviewconnections.com, and we're the premier guest booking agency for podcasters and guest experts. So my team of guest bookers, we get people booked as a guest on shows, and we also find guests for podcast hosts. I want to do a quick thank you to our sponsor for today's episode. It's Dream Business Academy, which all three of us, uh, I believe all three of us are attending. Um, <laughs> and we, it is a live business and marketing conference co-founded or not co-founded. What am I thinking? It is founded by Jim Palmer, the dream business coach. And this is a conference where you're going to learn all about building on a million dollar platform for your business, video marketing, podcasting, how to get your book done, your money and entrepreneurial mindset. You can get $100 off your ticket by using the coupon code podcast at checkout dream B I Z academy.com. Use the coupon code podcast at checkout. Well, this is the first podcast episode that I'm recording with video, hence the stumbles that I've already made. I have two guests with me. Uh, if you're listening to this on audio only, that's okay. You're missing out on our pretty faces, but if you're catching the video version on YouTube, hello and welcome. I have with me here One Click Lindsay, Lindsay Anderson from OneClickLindsay.com and TrafficAndLeads.com, and I also have here Adam Homey. Adam, what are you promoting these days? You were Help My Website Sell. What's, what do you have going on right now? Well, uh, what we have right now is the Business Creators Institute, which helps you win at the game of business and marketing. Uh, I have another blog uh, with various marketing interests called The Morning Adam, and we are getting ready to come out with our very own book. Recently, we were very happy to be part of the international Amazon bestseller Journeys to Success and Millennial Edition, and we have something else coming out in the spring of 2017, which I'm going to be announcing much more at this Dream Business Academy you keep telling us about. Uh, we have a working title as of the other day, but it only works for us. We can't say anything yet, but let's just say that this is going to be all about a loop that businesses find themselves caught in and how we're going to get you got out of that loop so that you can move upward and forward. Okay, perfect. Lindsay Anderson is an expert at driving traffic and leads to your website. I have worked with her um, as, a, as a client of Interview Connections for a couple of years now, and I've also utilized her services. I currently utilize her services. Um, uh, getting traffic and leads to my website. I saw your your uh, microphone coming into the picture, and I was like, what is "Sorry, <laughs> I wanted to make sure you could hear me." <laughs> yeah, no, um, I got. I thought there was like a UFO coming down. Into the <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I work with Lindsay. She's designed both of my websites, JustGrowsStepIs and InterviewConnections.com, and we're also doing some cool things with a, a content upgrade. So, um, Lindsay, can you tell us real quick about that? What a content upgrade is, and what you're doing on my website. Sure. So uh, when we in when we looked at Jessica's analytics, we saw that a lot of people were going to a specific page on her website, which was. Can you remind me what that page was? I'm sorry. So many steps um, to take to getting booked as a guest. Thank expert. you. Yeah. Sorry. So many content upgrades in my mind right now. <laughs> <laughs> I should be number uh, one. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you really should. So so many people were googling her. She was getting what was called organic search rankings on that, and so people were coming to that page on her website. She really didn't even put any SEO work into it or anything like that. So when people came to that page, it's very smart to do what's called a content upgrade, which is if they like what they see on that page, they had Googled it, they came there, they're going to want to know more. So we displayed a pop-up that basically said, hey, you like what you see on this page? Well, guess what? Jessica is giving away this free video on giving you more information. She's giving you a free one sheet. She's doing all this amazing stuff. And since we know what kind of people these are showing up here, they were already interested in this specific topic and they're opting in. So we do that through a pop-up and also at the very bottom of the article, we do a opt-in form. Now, I just want to tell everybody, when I say pop-up, everyone needs to have pop-ups on their website because that's where 90% of your opt-ins are gonna come from. So make sure you're doing that. Be careful with it, with it on mobile because Google came out and said they're not gonna like it on mobile, but make sure at least on your desktop version of your website, you have a pop-up. That's it. 
Awesome. And you know, I, I specifically brought Adam and Lindsay onto this podcast together because I remember when Lindsay first joined the Dream Business Mastermind, there are some funny conversations on the mastermind call because Lindsay's like, I'm going to drive more traffic and leads to your website. And Adam says, I don't like traffic. What I think it's traffic, <laughs> I'm just stuck on, you know, a highway with lots of cars, not going anywhere. So talk Good to thing Adam. Jessica's here to referee this fight. I'm here That's to referee <laughs> two expert minds when it comes to traffic and leads and website conversions. What do you have to say about that, Adam? Well, first, first of all, I'd like to point out for the record, and this is on my smartphone device, I have a photograph of one-click Lindsay Anderson attempting to murder me in public. It is oh, taken I, at I Dream Business Academy, and her hands are around my neck. <laughs> So I can take this to the authorities at any given time. In fact, I may add it to my slide deck at upcoming Dream Business Academy. When your cat shows up missing, don't come asking me where she is. And, 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 when, and when it's your turn to speak, just remember to point to me and say, that's right, my man, that's right. But seriously. Yeah. Can we add that picture to the show notes page for this yes, episode? You yes, you may. Sure, <laughs> absolutely. All right. So anyway. Uh, this whole thing about traffic and websites, what have you. I get up on stages like Dream Business Academy and some of the other places, and I'll say, folks, the very last thing you could ever need or want in your business is traffic to your website. And people look at me with like three heads and you know, talking about the world being flat and everything. And I just wait, and I see looks like the ones you're giving me right now. And I point out that <laughs> traffic, what is traffic? Traffic is the reason I work from home. And website, what's a website? Is that an about page, thank you page, sales page, contact page, products page, privacy policy page, blog page, podcast interview page? What is it? Each one of those things can be a website, and a website can have all those things. What we look for is to have targeted visitors to our web pages. Visitors to our web pages who are pre qualified, means right people, right message, prepped which means they know what they're getting when they click on that link in that email or social status or discussion group or what have you, and they're pumped, which means your site better have a fast load time because if it takes too long for your site to open, all that enthusiasm is just gonna sap away and they're not gonna sign up for your webinar. So remember, targeted visitors to your web pages who are pre-qualified, prepped, and pumped. Now folks may say to me, but that's the same thing as traffic to your website. Okay, from a logistical point of view, Basically, and here's a quick teaching point for all of your listeners, is you go into the marketing space and everybody's talking about, I'm going to get you more traffic to your website. You go into the marketing consulting space and everybody's talking about no like, and trust. So if you say that same thing that everybody else is saying, you're just another one of those dimes in a dozen, but rephrase it and redefine it, and now you've created your own niche. Okay, so um, Lindsay, why are you not another... What did you call people like that? Dime a dozen or another? Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Lindsay's the whole dozen and, and, and their quarters, not dime. <laughs> <laughs> no, there, Adam just answered it. No. Um, I see, yes, what Adam is saying is very true. I've had clients that fall into this dime a dozen category that the, the traffic driver, like myself, is driving traffic and getting them tons of hits on their website, but they happen to be, you know, from the other side of the world or from people who are clicking on clickbait, like, you know, some sexy article on Facebook, whatever it is, and they click in and it, this page has nothing to do with them. Those are definitely not the kind of traffic you want coming to your website. And really, hello, at trafficandleads.com, it's all about conversions. Like, we only care what comes out the other end of the funnel. It doesn't really matter what's coming in. Yeah, and uh, Lindsay just said hello because oh. Adam's cat was in the video. <laughs> yeah, that was Stella. She uh, she photobombed us. Where's yeah. Alessandra? Grab her. <laughs> well, she's out of my reach right now. She's doing that thing that cats do where they're just outside your reach. Yeah. So, so we'll just let her be. A lot of our listeners are people <laughs> that go on podcasts as a guest and their goal is to, you know, build their list and get listeners to go to their website and opt in. And there's, you know, a couple of different parts of that. There's A, you know, having, being a good enough guest, which we talk about in other episodes, but B, most importantly, you know, having a really good call to action, something that makes people actually want to go to your website, how to actually get there. So let's talk about that step. Um, what do you guys have to say about, and we'll start with Adam, actually getting people from the podcast 
to the website? Like what is going to entice people to actually go to your website when they are at their computer? I'm going to ask you to correct me if I'm wrong about this because you are the industry setting leader when it comes to podcast brilliance. But what I have found to be more effective is when you have an offer within your podcast is both attractive and evergreen. So, uh, you know, you, uh, you know, you've been on the business creators radio show, which is my podcast. And so is Jim Palmer. And we're allowed to talk about dream business Academy a little bit because we all speak at it and it's, you know, we're all part of the dream business faculty. Uh, on the, but however, if you go on somebody's podcast and the whole idea is you want to pitch an event, you want to pitch your product or something like that, it's generally not going to fly. The reason being is people go on podcasts to be educated, they go to be entertained, they go to not be sold to. If they want to be sold to, they'll sign up for a webinar, get their 20 minutes, their three steps to, and then listen to the pitch for 40 minutes about deciding either to buy it or to try and mimic it when they do their own webinar and try and sell their own thing. But in a podcast environment, you also have to remember some, like the Business Creators Radio Show, even though they're pre-recorded, are let out every single week at a specific time, Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific. Gives people something to look forward to. But generally speaking, most podcasts are, I don't want to say they're released whenever, but there's no real timing to it. So you could record a podcast today, and it might not see the light of the day for two weeks or two months. So pitching something like an event or a product is going to be ridiculous, even when you look at it in that context. So you want something that A, is evergreen, B, is attractive and gives real value, C, creates a way for somebody to become connected to you, whether it's opting into your list or joining your social community, and D, you have a plan behind it so that you can engage those people and pull them closer to you once they connect to you. The one thing I will add about the event, though, because uh, Dream Business Academy, uh, my dad, Jim Palmer, the podcast interviews have been one of the most successful ways that he's gotten people to them. And yeah. so what I'll kind of add there, because I've told people that, you know, events is a great thing that uh, podcast interviews are a great way to market an event. But the key is that you've got to have an evergreen kind of offer and thing that you're talking about and then focus on the actual host as a lead to, you know, attending your event. Because most of the people that, you know, sign up and come to Dream Business Academy by way of a podcast interview are the people who actually interview my dad. You know, they're people that he can actually have a green room chat with after the recording stops. So that's very, that's that's very important. Yeah, very that's important. That's your... Yeah, your green room stuff, uh, that conversation in the green room before or after is a lot of times where the real magic happens. I, I imagine you're probably going to cover this somewhere down the line, but people get obsessed over how many downloads do you have and how many channels do you distribute to. And people come to me and want to ask to give us those 25 questions because their time is so valuable. Give me a freaking break. I mean, I'm not, I mean, not to brag, but I've had names on the business creators radio show that are a lot bigger than these people whose time is quote unquote, so valuable. All uh, right. All right. The right. <laughs> <remember, laughs> host perspective is it doesn't matter to you as a host either. In many cases, unless you're looking to create the podcast as a center of revenue where you have advertisers and you're measuring click throughs and things like that. So if you're John Lee Dumas and yeah, your reach is important. Okay. Before, let's circle back. I want to circle back to the traffic part. Yeah. So, number one, having an offer that is evergreen is very important. Having yeah. a quality green room chat. Those are two really key steps actually when you're on the podcast. Uh, Lindsay, what that evergreen offer is, you know, uh, it's got to be evergreen, but what is going to make it something that people actually want to opt in for? You've talked about, you know, having quizzes and video series. You've talked in our mastermind about a lot of different lead magnets. So what are the types of offers that actually motivate people to get them and opt in for them? So that changes a lot. Like it's uh, that, that changes with the seasons, unfortunately. However, for today in this season, Video, uh, like uh, opt in for a video series, those aren't so hot, and I don't know why. They're just, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it was like six months ago when I made it. <laughs> It'll be hot again, maybe in six months. Maybe like it changed totally my uh, opt in. Um, and I don't know why that is, but right now, straight up, people are digging PDFs, which is like old school. I know. Stop getting mad. <laughs> 
I'm seeing that on both organic search engine results and Facebook ads. Facebook ads can tell you a lot in a very little bit of time. Oh, it's circular. That's what Adam said. That's the whole I thing. Don't. Things get so old, they're new again. Yes. We thought the PDFs were dead. We always think that email marketing is dead, but that's the one thing that's constant. Yeah. Like the best from, from my hundreds of clients, my best running Facebook ad right now that's getting about 75 cents per qualified opt in is an ebook, wow. which is totally lame. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't need to be sexy, it just needs to work. No, but my, you know, along those same lines, when you're being inter, let's bring it back to a podcast interview. Yeah. When you're being interviewed on podcasts, when I go out and get interviewed on podcasts, my evergreen offer is my 14 days to more traffic and leads. You go to my website, you'll see a pop up, and it's basically every day for one day, every day for 14 days, you'll get a little email from me with an action tip that will help you produce more traffic and leads. Uh, by the end of the 14 days, you should be getting a ton more traffic and leads. Of course, through that, there's a little bit of selling. There's a little bit of testimonials. There's a little bit of this and that. But that has uh, been very good for me. Um, people are getting an email from me every day for 14 days. If you were to email your list every day for 14 days, they would probably unsubscribe or a lot of them. So it's a very powerful way to get their, their um, permission to do that. The other thing, when I'm on podcast interviews, see how I just like – uh, put that into this interview as my example. Mm -hmm. If you can make your evergreen offer to be your example, like maybe you're talking about um, how to discipline your children and you have this amazing PDF, you can basically kind of squeeze it in so the host isn't thinking you're selling something, mm -hmm. but you're kind of using it as an example. So make sure, as Jim Palmer says, to seed those interviews with your evergreen offer to drive more people there and to optimize your time on the podcast. Seed based marketing. Yeah, something Man. you learn at Dream Business That's Academy. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So, Adam, you, uh -oh. you know, one of your websites and something that you focus on a lot is, you know, helpmywebsitesell.com. No, I don't. No. <laughs> Businesscreatorsinstitute.com. Business it's, it's, it's a very recent change. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. I've known Adam for a long time, so I, I need to stay up to date on the different focuses, but. <laughs> I did like help my website sell, though. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but everybody, awesome? thought, everybody thought I was in the website flipping business. Okay, so Adam is just so everyone knows, Adam is not in the website flipping business. You cannot hire him to design your website, but what you can learn at Business Creators Institute is how to make a website sell and convert, right? Yeah. yeah okay. So, <laughs> what are some of the biggest mistakes people make with their website in terms of getting people to actually convert and like opt in and not bounce. Like you mentioned something before was you better have a your website better load or else people are going to bounce off of it. So talk about some of the mistakes and things people need to do. Yeah, that's very, that's very true. Load speed is critical in this day and age with the proliferation of social media and instant media, part of which I cover in journeys to success, the millennial edition, uh, which you know, gets into this idea of how people are so empowered that they don't have to be lied to by mainstream media. They don't have to believe the truths they've been told. If they want to fact check something, they can do it right now. Your website is a source and a resource for people who want to check facts and gain facts. So those facts better be there is actually kind of point number two. Number one, point load very quickly. Number two, uh, you know, we're back to the days where simplicity in design is vogue. Uh, it's another thing, the circle of life. You know, five years ago, we were talking about these long sales letters on every page, and now we're back to simplicity. Five years ago, we were talking about being creative with the names of the links in the menu bar. Now we're back to about product, services, contact, blog, hmm. because people are looking for simplicity. And also, you have to bear in mind when you have a mobile responsive website, which your website needs to be today. If your website is not mobile responsive, you're gonna lose your juice if you haven't already. Uh, you have to remember the way the little menu works is you're not gonna have much space. So you need home, services, products, blog, contact, not the long fancy names we used to give the stuff. So that's another, that's another thing. And one other thing I'll point out is that you need to have a very strong focus on any given page of your website because remember the distinction, as I said earlier, between a web page and a website. Each web page has its own function. So if you want people to take an action, you need to be clear on what that action is. And as I'm sure Lindsay would tell you, the fact that you have different pages that do different things give you more optimization opportunities. 
Yeah, it's a really good point you make about the, um, you know, like the simplicity of the website too, and what yeah. you want people to do when they get there. Um, because you could send somebody to your main website and they might get there and say, I don't know where to go from here. And I also like what you said about the mobile responsiveness. Most people listening to podcasts are on a mobile device. Even when I'm sitting, when I am sitting at my desk on my computer, I play podcasts on my phone. I just have it playing out of my phone speakers. iPhone speakers are pretty loud. I play it through my phone. I don't open up iTunes and add another application to open on my computer. It's all on my phone. So and then I can keep it playing when I go into the car. And so if you give people a call to action, it's in the show notes page, they click it open on their phone, it's got to be mobile responsive. Um, how do you make sure your load time is fast? I don't have no idea how to do that. Well, uh, the plurality of websites in this day and age are on WordPress. I mean, and it's not just us marketers. I mean, you have even a lot of your big names. I believe the New York Times uses WordPress at this point. And, uh, you know, a lot of your most famous thespians, Sylvester Stallone comes immediately to mind, have been WordPress users forever now. So with WordPress, you want to use elegant but simple design themes that load very quickly. You want to make sure that your images or not, you don't, you don't have like a four gig image when it only needs to be like 300 by 200. Resize your images or squish your images, please. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to things like buttons and certain design elements like boxes around things, you want to use what's known as CSS. I'm not going to get overly technical here, but I think most of our listeners have an idea what that is. It's the idea that you use a bunch of code to make things look like buttons and borders and things like that rather than using graphics. That will also speed up your load time. Uh, with your WordPress site, only use the plugins, which are add-ons that allow it to do additional things that are absolutely necessary. Don't add every plugin just because your buddy designed it. Only use the ones you really need and make sure that you have a good, reliable web host with fast servers. Uh, cheap hosting will get you exactly that. Uh, if you are not, I'm, I'm going to throw out a number here. If you're not paying like a hundred bucks a month for your hosting, you're probably on some crap server somewhere. They're going to crash on you and they're probably killing you in ways you don't even realize. I hate to be blunt like that, but I don't know how else to get the, the message through. I mean, seriously, I'm not going to mention any names because that tends to evolve as quality goes up and down with companies, but that's just a benchmark to look for. Um, and you want to have some control over your own server with that so you can optimize the what are known as the PHP any setting so that it goes faster, allows more simultaneous connections, which means more people on at the same time. And, uh, and Lindsay also, I know, does some work with speed optimization. So you might want to ask her too. There's some stuff that she knows more about than I do. Okay. So on that note, if you are listening to this and you're like me, you zoned out the past five minutes because you have no idea what Adam is talking about. So I want to segue into thinking. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I have an actionable tip. Can I give an actionable tip? Hold on to it because I'm going to give you an actionable <laughs> tip uh -oh. here in a second. I'm getting I'm brutalized. I'm getting Shut brutalized down. here. No, so, this yeah. information is great. <laughs> So I want to talk a little bit, take a few minutes to talk about our sponsor, Dream Business Academy, because one of the very important lessons that you learn at Dream Business Academy is building a team, delegating, and outsourcing the tasks that you should not be doing. I have no business building a website. I have no Just business damn. figuring out what hosting my website is on. I pay people like Lindsay and Adam to do that stuff and like figure it out for me. So this information is great, but chances are you should be building a team and hiring people um, like trafficandleads.com, like the Business Creators Institute and Adam Homie to do what they do. And so that's one of the things you learn at Dream Business Academy because to build your dream business, you need to build out a team and have experts, you know, kind of like a board of directors in your business. You need experts that are, you know, um, allowing, freeing up your time to do high revenue generating activities. So this is an event that's in Orlando, Florida, February 8th, 9th, and 10th, 2017. You can get $100 off your ticket by using the coupon code podcast at checkout. And Adam, you are going to be one of the speakers there. Do you want to tell, tease your presentation a little bit? Well, it's going to be about, it's going to be about book launches, basically. Um, we're going to 
do some uh, examples of features of a book launch. Uh, I'm going to go over a couple of successful book launches, and we're going to play with some language, too. What I mean by that is there's certain things you can do with languaging and positioning that is so subtle and so simple, and yet it is so effective because most people will only receive it on the subconscious level, which means it'll be doubly impactful because number one, they'll receive it, and number two, because it's subconscious, their conscious resistance will not get in the way of it, so it'll allow the message to come through. That's um, really I, interesting. That's very yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I promise I'm not going to put up 17 different slides and say, who's this famous person who became famous or, or famous like by writing a book? Because we've done that for the last three sold out Dream Business Academy. And for this next Dream Business Academy, which is going to sell out, we're going to do something a little bit different. Yeah. And Adam, um, I hired Adam to launch interview connections, how to rock the podcast from both sides of the mic. Um, this will be launching January 30th. So go to interview connections, get interview connections book.com after January 30th to get your copy of the book. But, um, that's another session at dream business Academy is learning how to get your book done. Uh, because becoming an author is very powerful. It's a big part of the million dollar marketing platform that grows your business exponentially. These are all things you're going to learn at dreambizacademy.com. Get $100 off your ticket by using the coupon code podcast at checkout. And I would be remiss if I didn't ask Lindsay about the first time she went to Dream Business Academy, how she found out about Dream Business Academy and how it has affected her life and her business. Fair enough. So um, just like we were talking about at the beginning of this podcast, I was interviewed by Sir Jim Palmer on his podcast. And I was obviously impressed with him. If you have not listened to his podcast, make sure you get out there, stick like glue radio. And after the podcast, we were doing the green room chat and he was asking me how I was different than everyone else. And I hoed and hummed and he said, you better get your rear end to Dream Business Academy, even though it's next month and you have two small children under the age of three. And I will, I, I don't even think he waived for my price for a ticket. I think he probably gave me some sort of discount, but he's very firm and you, you know, you want to pay for stuff so you can appreciate it. So I showed up. Um, and it was extremely powerful for me. I learned so much. I met so many great people like Jessica and Adam. Um, and I was able to connect with small business owners and actually like, you know, being a small business owner can be very uh, lonesome because your friends are small business owners. And suddenly you're part of this mastermind and people who totally get it. They get the ups and downs of business. They get that it can be hard. And, uh, it's been, it's definitely been a business changer. Not only that, Jim has helped me with my marketing. He's helped me with my positioning. He's helped me with my confidence. Like you should totally go. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me, yeah, let, let me just say a couple other things. And this is because when we think of going to events, we think of some of the things that stress us out about events. Um, the presentations that just go on and on and on, and then they run over because they have to have time to do their full pitch. Not only is Dream Business Academy fast-paced, it gets right to the point without any fluff whatsoever. You have a manual you can use to fill in the blanks and follow along, and it's a pitch-free zone. I mean, you know, truly a pitch-free zone as far as all the speakers. I mean, like, we're not allowed to pitch. We can plant seeds all day long, but I can't get up there and say, sign up for my four-part webinar series. It's just $7.97. We're not allowed to do that, which is good for you. Uh, so you're not going to have to spend an hour and a half on this one topic while the speaker spends 45 minutes talking about themselves and showing their vacation pictures. You're going to get 15 to 30 minutes on that topic and you're going to know what to do. Yeah. Here's another thing that's really big. And this is why I, you know, I'm very selective about the big events I go to is uh, Jim feeds you. Um, even at the platinum level, he's going to buy you a lunch every day, like a real lunch which means you're not going to have to go to the same restaurant that 500 other people are going to and then wolf down a meal and then run back and still be 10 minutes late and pay $39 for that privilege. You're going to get a delicious lunch, a full lunch provided to you, and that's going to be more networking time for you and your fellow Dream Business owners. Uh, Dream Business Academy is the only event that I've been to where I have not felt a shortage 
of opportunities to get to know people. If you don't have every single person in the room as your friend, then you must not have taken the time. I mean, even an introverted person like myself can make friends with everybody in the room at Dream Business Academy. And that's saying something because I hate crowds. Yeah, and I would I, I would definitely, so if you go to Dream B-I-Z, dreambizacademy.com, um, you'll want to upgrade to the titanium ticket because then you'll be able to go out to dinner uh, with Jim and his team at night. So with the platinum ticket, you do get lunch with that, uh, but you want to upgrade. So you could also be going to the dinners um, Friday night. It's going to be this awesome. I think we're doing like a murder mystery dinner. It's just so fun. You don't want to miss out on it. Yeah. So yeah, dreambizacademy.com. You can get $100 off your ticket. Use the coupon code podcast at checkout. And we all look forward to seeing you there. So Back to our conversation about traffic and leads, we talked about having it be an evergreen offer. What offers are good right now? Like six months ago, I was saying, oh, video series, that's great. Six months ago, Lindsay says video series, and now she's like, <laughs> Well, they're not so hot. So things are constantly changing. That's why it's really important to have experts working with you. If you are not, you know, a, a marketing agency, someone like Lindsay or Adam, you should be, you need to have experts on your team, people that are doing this stuff for you. So this is all great information, but I really strongly advise everyone listening to be um, working with people like Lindsay and Adam and different service providers to actually do a lot of this implementation because I'm telling you, coding and WordPress and hosting, it's, it's not out, it's outside most of our skill sets and areas of expertise. Um, but let's talk about some of the stuff that our listeners, you know, should be, you know, implementing and, and doing. So what else goes into driving traffic and actually converting leads? Maybe we can talk about like the email sequences because once somebody opts into the list, if you're not nurturing that relationship, they're just going to unsubscribe or not read any of your emails. So Lindsay, why don't you take that one? Sure. So I think we need to back up one step. There's still okay. so many people who don't have that opt-in on their website. And okay. maybe they don't know. They don't know what yeah. to put on there. They don't know what to do. Sad. Like, is what, yeah. Is what you don't do is sign up for my newsletter. That'll get you zero opt-ins. What you do need to do is come up with something. Wait, I need to add something really quick because when I was first starting my first business, Entrepreneur Sports Services, um, I know Adam doesn't want me to say this, but Adam did build that website for me back in the day. That was um, four years ago. It's okay. It was four okay. years ago. That's what he did four years oh, ago. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And I didn't have an opt-in yet. And I said, well, Adam, could I just get my opt-in up? Just say sign up for my newsletter. He goes, well, it's kind of like holding a slippery noodle, but you can try. <laughs> I, yeah, I did say something like that. I, I, th I think I said a little less diplomatically, but that was the gist of it. <laughs> so, oh yeah, I think this is good. Thank you for bringing us back here, Lindsay. Talk about that, the opt-in box, the pop-up, because of course you can have your offer, you can have an opt-in, but if it sucks, nobody's going to convert. Right. So, I mean, put some thought into it, but I mean, I find a lot of people that are still kind of frozen it. I'm not going to do it because I don't know what to put on there. Like literally put something up, give away. What I like to say is give away your deepest, darkest secrets. Like my 14 days to more traffic and leads on my website gives away all of my secrets. So uh, guess what? Like they, it will build trust. It's a, per a perfect example is I once did a video on why a Wix website will totally work for you. And I published that on Facebook and everything. And I got five or six people being like, are you not making websites anymore? Like, why did you say Wix was a totally cool place to have a website? Because it works for a lot of people, but when they're ready to upgrade, then all of a sudden I have their trust because I was telling them that it would work for them. And so just come up with something. Your deepest, darkest secrets about your business would be your best opt-in, but get an opt-in up. And on that note, and I said this before and I'll say it again, get a pop-up on your website. 90% of people will um, opt in on a pop-up, not on a sidebar, not on an upper thing. It must be a pop-up. Um, and I know that's used car salesy and it's annoying and we all hate them, but guess what? They work. So totally get a pop-up on there. There's free WordPress plugins, Sumo Me. Um, I use Thrive Themes, which is about a hundred dollars and basically make sure you have that pop-up on there. Very, very important. And then onto what Jessica was saying, then you feed them an email, a couple of emails a day about that opt-in like hey did you get that PDF? Did you like it? Oh, did you hear what this customer said about that PDF? Oh look, I changed his life and feed them emails and then wrap them into like your weekly email list. Never stop emailing these people. You have to be consistent. You can't email them once and then skip three months and then email them once a week. People will unsubscribe. Sit down and say to yourself, self, I'm going to email these people consistently for the next year, every single Friday. And you have to do it. 
Yeah, I totally agree with that. It's just your mom on your list. Like everyone starts at zero. That's the other thing. People st- don't want to do it because they have zero people on their list. Guess what? Everyone's mom. I think my I had in, uh, my mom unsubscribe. Like, come on, just keep <laughs> on your list. <laughs> yeah, just start building it. it's so important. I've I've unsubscribed to a f- few emails recently because I'm like, wait, I must have opted in like a year ago. They never emailed me, and all of a sudden they email me, so I'm immediately like unsubscribe because I don't know who you are. And I don't even remember opting into yeah. that. That's what, that, that's what happens if you don't keep contact. Now, what's funny is, is, you know, thinking of thinking beyond the email list. Um, I found it helpful if you integrate a few things into your email sequence. One is when you're sending out that email, it says, hey, congratulations. Thanks for signing up. Here's your PDF. We encourage our clients to put a PS in. It says, hey, just so I know that I held up my end of the deal, could you just do a quick reply and just say received or got it? And you'd be surprised how many people will take that 10 seconds just to click received. Now, right. two things happen when, that, when they, click rece- they click reply and they reply and they say they received it. What you've done is you've created a dialogue between your broadcast email address and that subscriber. And the more that the email servers and the people who decide what emails are relevant, which ones are spam, see a dialogue rather than a megaphone, the mm-hmm. more likely they're, they are to rate that as a highly valuable email. So if you're using Gmail or Yahoo or one of those many other providers that have now implemented the tabs, there's a greater chance it's going to find its way over the primary on its own without you dragging it. Wow. So that's... Little secret right there. That's Love a it. big Love secret. It. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. huge. And I mean, I was... I didn't even think about the whole spam thing, how they'll see if there's a dialogue, they're more likely to, you know, not market as spam, but it also just engages you in conversation with people that are getting your emails. That was point number two. Yeah. So many people are getting your emails that you don't know, like you see the open rate, but you don't know who these people are. Um, You know, I just got a Facebook message yesterday on my business page. Somebody, I don't know who he is. I've never met him, but he said, Hey, you know, I, I've been getting your emails. Congrats on your first employee. And I'm like, wow, this person's been following me, seeing my updates. I didn't know him. And you know, after I should probably look, I'm curious, I'm going to look up and see how long he's been on my list, but people are quietly reading and watching and if you ask them to reply they will the the times where i've said um one of my successful like email marketing strategies is when i'm traveling like i went to la and i said hey i'm going to la saying calabasas what recommendations do you have and everyone who lives in the area was replying you got to do this you got to do this you got to do this so yeah i love it yeah yeah in fact in fact i know that uh, you and i share a client Mm -hmm. and uh he just he can't stop talking about the fact you emailed out and said, hey, who's in San Diego? Yeah. And he had a chance to come down and meet you guys. I mean, I, exactly. he, he mentions it to me every week, and it was three months ago. <laughs> That's awesome. It's, it's, it's funny how that works. So you actually kind of – remember I said I was going to have two points about that. You said the second point, which is it creates a sense of engagement where you're actually dealing with a live human being. And then one other point, because I, you know, I know we're time limited here, is – when you're creating these email sequences, uh, be digitally literate. Uh, mm-hmm. One sentence can be its own paragraph. Lots of bullet points. Grammar doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be something. Remember, a lot of people are reading their emails on something about this big. Right. So you, need, you need the bullet points. You need the short sentences that are paragraphs by themselves. Because you have to remember, a lot of people aren't reading on a big monitor anymore. And you yeah. don't want their eyes to get tired. And then beyond that, have some fun with it. Now you've both been subjected to me inside our dream business mastermind Facebook group where you've posted screenshots of emails. I've said, whoa, 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 hold my beer, watch this. And then I take your email, I insert pictures of my cats and I said, there you go. It's going to be 500,000 times better now because I've made the email perfect. So the serious point I'm making is have fun, be an engaging, funny person that people love to hear from that they can imagine just hanging out with. And you're going to have a greater chance that that engagement is going to work. People tell me that. And Adam, I mean, we're laughing because you have literally done that where I've screenshot an email that really worked and then you upload it back with a picture of your cat. And we laugh. But the point that you're making that I believe is really true is that the more personal you make your interactions with your list and your community, 
people like that. Like, yeah, okay, we're in business and we're giving actionable tips and content. But when people feel like they know you personally, they're more connected to you. They feel like you're, you know, you're their friend. In my email newsletter that goes out every Tuesday, I have a section, you know, what's going on at Interview Connections headquarters. And sometimes it's something like related to my business. And most times it's like what I did over the weekend, what, you know, I did with Nathan and Lucy. And it's like people feel like they're getting to know me as a person, not just me as the entrepreneur. Um, so yeah, keeping it personal too, and just adding in pictures, you know, people like that. And then the other thing I've, I've asked, um, when I had Gary George on the podcast years ago, I asked him about having people opt in with their first name or last name or both or not at all. Like the emails that I get where I, my first name is not in the two line, like it's just less personal. What do you guys think about that? I agree wholeheartedly because I've seen a movement of only ask for their email address because you want to make it as easy as possible for them to opt in. And I say, fine, do that. You have just lost an incredible advantage because you want to make it quote unquote easier for quote unquote anybody to quote unquote opt in. When you see an email that comes to you and it has your name in it, there's something yeah. about seeing your own name that draws you in. And, um, and, if, and every once in a while, I love to receive an email with a subject line where my name, my first name or last name or whatever is in the subject line. Now, if you do it every single time you send an email, like every email you send out is, Jessica, what are you doing today? Jessica, here are five more secrets. Obvious. Jessica, sign up for my webinar. Like, goodness gracious, it's like that person you see at the coffee shop and they say, hi, Jessica, how are you doing today, Jessica? Jessica, have you been to the mall lately? Jessica, how's your cat? But if you do it strategically, it yeah. has that impact because it's a pattern interrupt. Along those same lines, Adam and I were working on a form together for a mutual client. And, and as you said, as you said, most of what marketing professionals say is only ask for what you need. And Adam came up with this crazy idea to ask them. Yeah, it was like that. Ask them for their phone number. And I thought, whatever what? you'd like to do, Adam, go for it. And I thought, Optional Versus, phone number. Yeah, optional phone don't, number. I thought conversion the, rates. Yeah, don't require the phone number, but optional and tell us what happened. And like, I would you say 80% of the people filled out their phone number on that form and I don't think it, it didn't matter to conversion rates at all. I was no. shocked, shocked. Right. And yeah, uh, yeah and, then, and then if you're going to see the other thing that I want to point I want to make though, is if you're asking for information on a form, have a plan to use it because mm. um, if you actually have a plan to call some of the people who opt into your list, not to necessarily make an offer because it's actually really cool. And, and we, you know, we teach this, Jim Palmer teaches it and I teach it as well is when you have uh, somebody who pays you and gives you money for that thing that you sell and you call them up and you just say, Hey, I want to make sure you got your username and password. Want to make sure. So you have a chance to maybe watch the videos. What do you think so far? Is it okay if I check in with you in a week or so once you've had a chance to go through it? You make a phone call like that where you don't offer anything, sell anything, or try and upsell anything, you're putting like a major goodwill deposit in the bank just because so few people who have heard people like me tell you to do it don't. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I've, I've done that where I'll just, people will buy my ebook and I just call and say, hey, I just wanted to say thank you for getting the book, you know? You have a podcast? And it's like we just chat and then that's somebody that I now know and they know me personally, so it goes a long way. Were you going to mention something, Lindsay? Um, all I was going to say was the moral of that story is even if you're listening, and like go back to the videos not working and all of this, like every day is different. Every business is different. Like in a way you kind of like close your eyes and do it your own way and see what works for your audience. As far as all this stuff is concerned, there isn't the right way. Yeah. And it's different audiences, you know, convert with different kinds of offers. So while this is kind of, um, and I, I always contradict my own advice because I don't have a free offer that I, I mean, right now when I'm doing podcast interviews, I'm talking about the book, obviously, so I'm promoting that, but most of the year I'm just saying, Hey, just grow stuff is that's where you can find my podcast, my videos. Cause for me, it's about the individual connection I have with the host and, um, just, you know, getting exposure for me and my brand. I'm not, I don't have like a specific offer or something like that. Um, and so there's not a right and wrong way, but I think the lesson is that you have to think about like you have to know what your goal is with the podcast interviews and then know that each, all these different pieces of the puzzle that we're talking about, you, you need to be doing them 
in the right way for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like some people yes. want to go on the podcast interviews and like, it's not working. And that's like, well, maybe your offer sucks. Maybe your website doesn't convert. Maybe you have no email sequence. So you're not, people are unsubscribing. You know, there's so many different things that you need to consider if you want to be successful. Um, uh, guys, real quick. Um, mm-hmm. Stella was here earlier. I just wanted you to say hi to Alessandra. So the hi, way Alessandra. Adam's cat is making a, an appearance in there the podcast. Awesome. Go on, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you both so much for, for joining us on the podcast. This is really valuable information for, for my community. Um, Lindsay, tell us trafficandleads.com. Uh, you are the go-to resource for driving traffic and leads to your website. I don't know if that's your tagline, but tell us about Ooh, pretty much like you pretty much summed it up right there so if you need help building your list seo pay-per-click facebook ads driving qualified traffic right adam um that's right. Definitely, you can find us at trafficandleads.com or my website where i talk about all of these topics in bite-sized chunks one click lindsay.com spell that however you want yeah and go listen to her podcast too it's traffic and leads podcast really great show um adam tell us about your business what people can work with you on Right. Basically, we do here at the Business Creators Institute is we help you win at the game of business and marketing by getting you out of those loops that keep you on a plateau or keep you stuck. A lot of times what is getting in the way of your success in business and marketing is a combination of an inner game issue and not knowing what you don't know. So our mission is to help you avoid all of the obstacles, pitfalls, mistakes, as much as possible that others have made before you. So we view ourselves as the trailblazers to help you win at the game of business and marketing and implement systems in your business. So you spend less time editing and maintaining your websites and technology and more time educating your audience and monetizing your brand. Awesome. Thank you both. And you can listen to Adam's podcast, The Business Creators Radio Show. Um, yes. They both have podcasts. They're both very smart. Leveraging uh, the power of podcast interviews, rocking it from both sides of the mic. Um, if you enjoyed this podcast, enjoy this podcast episode, I invite you to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, iHeart, or Google Play. And please leave a rating and review. I'd love to hear from you. Um, I want to thank Podfly Productions for producing the show. And a big thank you to Dream Business Academy for sponsoring. We would love to see you in Orlando um, this February 8th, 9th, and 10th. Go to Dream Biz. That's B-I-Z, dreambizacademy.com. Use the coupon code podcast at checkout to get $100 off your ticket. I am Jessica Rhodes here to help you rock the podcast from both sides of the mic. And I'll talk to you next Wednesday. Oh.